Today we have many different shipping canals all over the world like the Swiss Canal, Panama Canal and the one in Greece, the Corinth Canal connecting the Saronic Gulf and the Gulf of Corinth. Now canals are great because they save you a good amount of time and otherwise a very long journey. But the problem with the canals is that most of them are built in the late 19th century which means that for most of the people in the history they didn't have any option, they had to take the longer route. But this is not true for the people in Greece because they had the Dalkos which is also known as the rudimentary form of railway. It carried the ships all the way across the isthmus of Corinth since 7th to 6th century BC. So here's everything you need to know about the Dalkos. Intro. This is actually a paved trackway near Corinth and it enabled the ships to be moved over land across the isthmus of Corinth. Now it saved people from a very long journey across the Pinopolis which is this island right here and not only the journey was rough it was also famous for its rough seas and the high speed gale winds. So it was always a better choice to take this route. But it wasn't all that simple because you had to manually pull the ship all the way across on some kind of a wheel shipment with the force you have. So Dalkos is more about the pathway which is actually paved out of the limestone and the reason why it is paved is that so that the wheel platform in which the ship was to be carried had to move only on this path and not anywhere else. So this pathway is almost 6 meters wide and it is about 6 to 7 kilometers long. Now the land strip is only about 6.4 kilometers but since the topography of the region isn't entirely flat there are different slopes all across the path. So the steepest section on this path has a gradient of almost 6%. So the way this trackway functioned was ship arrived at either one of the girls and then it was completely unloaded with everything they could. All the cargo and all the supplies they had so that they could make it as light as possible. Now when this process was done, it was actually with the help of some cranes and ropes put on some kind of a wheel platform. Now this wheel platform was then ahead pulled by men or animals or both sometimes all the way across the isthmus. And as soon as they pulled it all the way across, then it was again pushed into water and all the cargo and supplies was loaded again. Many historians also believe this to be as the rudimentary form of railway because the paved trackway is actually such that the wheels could only move along this track and not anywhere else with only one vehicle at a time. The average railway gauge or the distance between the tracks is only about 5 feet which is close to the modern day standard and taking a closer look at this on the observed pathway this is well in agreement with the observations on the eastern side. However, on looking at the western side, the grooves doesn't appear at all. Now the possible explanation for this should be that since Dalkos worked for a very long time, there could be many modifications and changes made to the track, which would have significantly altered its appearance. The path was also used to transport goods too, so it served the land commercially as well. The trackway also served well in the wars. Like in the Peloponnesian War, the Spartans planned to threaten Athens by carrying over their warships all the way across the Dalkos, since this war was fought between Athenians and Spartans. But in 411, they actually transported their whole squadron and their warships all the way across the Dalkos and then further ascending into Chios, which is another Greek island. Similarly, in 220 BC, the Demetrius of Pharos dragged over 50 vessels over the Dalkos in 217 BC. A fleet of 38 Macedonian ships also crossed the Dalkos with the largest ships traveling across the Cape Malia. Scientists estimate that the number of men required to pull the boat all the way across the isthmus was somewhere between 112 to 142. Now this was again for the smaller ships because the larger ships were already too heavy to carry anyway. Now the smaller boats also served the purposes as well but this was still a better option they had rather than traveling all the way across the Peloponnese. It is also believed that the track served the purpose till 50 AD or half of the first century but after that we have found no mentions of it in the history. And although this process of pulling the boat all the way across with your own power was quite tedious but 
The sailors and the rulers didn't have to bother anyway because all the work of pulling was done by the slaves. So this process of transporting ships on wheels was quite tedious. So the idea of connecting the two lands by digging a canal isn't very new either. It was quite old and many ancient rulers also tried to dig a canal. But they failed mostly due to the uh, different wars and also due to the lack of funds. It was actually in 67 AD when the Greece was under the Roman rule that the Emperor Nero actually started the process of digging the tunnel physically and he started the work. But unfortunately soon he died and the process was then abandoned. Now today we also have a modern day canal running almost parallel to the Darkos and this canal also faced many issues in its construction. Its construction was actually completed in the year 1882. Today this canal saves you from a 700 km long journey. But it's only 70 feet wide, which is too narrow for the modern day freighters. So most of the big ships really can't cross the canal and it is merely a tourist attraction today. But it is a great tourist attraction with almost 11,000 tourist trips crossing over the canal in a year. So that is it for this one and I hope you guys like the video. Which is your favorite canal? Comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!